10 things that make a woman undateable. You know, what makes you undateable? Thank you so much for joining us again on Second Act TV. I want to welcome back Robert Manny. You may not recognize him. <laughs> <laughs> the author of The Guy's Guy's Guide to Love and the host of Guy's Guy Radio and TV. Robert, thank you for being here. My pleasure. I can't wait to get started once again, Silka. Robert, our topic today, I, I think, is, is, is a fun one and informative one. <laughs> the title here of this article, 10 Things That Make a Woman Undateable. Great, great clickbait uh, title. <laughs> you know, what makes you undateable? Here's number one, is being a negative Nancy, I love all these titles that a negative Nancy uh, takes pessimism to a whole new level, constant complaining, you know, and that men just don't want to be around women who are constantly negative. Nobody wants to be around with other with negativity. And if you're in a dating game and you want to meet somebody new and make a connection, it's really a new start. You want to start off fresh. You want it to be positive. It's a new chance. So I think being positive is, is paramount to, to success. I mean, when I was on uh, online dating and I would go through the profiles, anybody who had negativity in their profile, any complaining, next. Because I figured if they, you can't get through even the profile stage without going negative, whether it's I don't want or my ex-boyfriend or my ex-husband or whatever it is, if you can't get through this little snapshot without being uh, negative, then it's a to me, it's foretelling potential problems along the way. You want somebody who's positive. You don't certainly want to walk into something where it's going to be just laced in negativity. Exactly. Well, and it always surprises me how many people just go to the negative side all the time or make comments and aren't even aware of it. Here's, here's number two, the damsel in distress. That's an undateable woman. <laughs> that expecting a man to solve all your problems is a recipe uh, for disappointment. And while some men might actually enjoy playing the hero, it gets old real fast. Yeah, I think every there every situation is different. There are some um, sometimes where you have one partner is needy and the other person likes to be needed. And when you put them together, and I can think of some personal friends and relatives of mine who fit that and it works, but it has to be done with a balance. Um, for me, I like somebody who's self-sufficient. If I can help out, I love to help out. Yeah. But it, uh, you don't want it to be like they can't do anything without me or I can't do anything without them. I don't think as a general rule that guys really are attracted to somebody who's so needy that you have to do everything for them. Yeah. The, the damsel in distress really is out of the fairy tale. It's a fairy tale and, and they don't exist. <laughs> so like, <laughs> and I agree with you. I think you do want to make your man feel like a hero you know, when it's appropriate, but you don't want to be the damsel in, in distress. Exactly. I think, I think it's a takeaway there. That leads actually uh, number three, what you just said, clingy Kathy. Are you a clingy Kathy? Clingy Kathy behaviors can range from excessive texting and calling to needing constant physical touch and wanting to spend every waking moment together yeah well i think the underlying issue there is insecurity um you like somebody who want you know wants to be close and have some type of intimacy emotional intimacy and and constant contact in a in a in a mature way but when it becomes uh, too clingy too clingy um, sometimes it's because of their insecurity or they're checking up on you. I know I was in a relationship and the other person would always contact me at the end of the day to say good night. And I just subconsciously felt this is saying good night and this is checking up on me. There is a fine line uh, in terms of uh, needing somebody and being clingy and then being insecure and too clingy. Yeah, you know, I, I do get that. I do get that. And I've actually, I've actually done that. Mm -hmm. You know, to yeah. where the, the good night thing seems like a nice thing to do, but there is a, there is a clinginess or a, um, 
well, A, I'm checking on you. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and it was, it, it really was. So yeah, clingy Kathy, uh, not not appealing and you will you will run. And that goes the other way too. If, if the guy, yeah. you know, is like that with a woman, just overbearing, it's, it's very, very unattractive and, and not likely to last. Here, here's one we've talked about, gosh, a million times, the drama queen that a penchant for theatrics can quickly turn a woman from a potential catch to a dating disaster. <laughs> yeah, um, well, drama, guys don't like, in a general sense, they're not big on drama. We have our own issues to deal with as, as everybody does. And when it becomes one thing to help out on and, and help you know, solve and be there as a backstop or just to listen, whatever it is, that's great. But when it's when you're with somebody and it's always the next drama, and I've dealt with some of that. We talked about that a little earlier. That it just becomes uh, draining and tedious, and the guys don't want to get into a relationship where it's going to be all about the drama. If you're a person who creates drama all the time, you've got to look in the mirror and say, "Am I creating drama all the time? And why am I doing this? And is there something I need to work on?" I mean. There's a great lack of circumspection in our culture these days. People never want to be wrong. They're afraid of being wrong. And I think that's a, that's a red flag for relationships if it's going to be all about the drama. Nobody, everybody's got their own dramas to deal with. Right. Well, and, and I think the difference between, you know, airing problems and being a drama queen is really, you know, is this necessary or are exactly. you creating unnecessary stress, unnecessary fights? I think a good solution to that is to pick your battle. Like really ask yourself that is, you know, is this necessary or am, am I just trying to get attention? Because mm -hmm. cre creating conflict will get you attention, may not be the attention that that you want, <laughs> yeah. uh, because it's, it's not sustainable. So uh, here, here's one, here's one I love. The filter queen, now this, this is um, really reflects, you know, the, the younger generation. We didn't go through this, but we are going through it now because filters do come in handy at our age. <laughs> But the filter queen they're describing here that uh, she heavily edits photos, airbrushing away imperfections and warping features to achieve flawless and often unattainable looks. But that's a huge problem, especially if you're online dating and doing that. Well, you know, ultimately, if you're going to have a successful relationship, you've got to go from online to offline. So I always suggest be as honest as you possibly can be, particularly with your looks, because if you get in front of the other person, they're going to see who you are. So you want to put yourself in the best light. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, making yourself look great or cosmetic surgery, whatever you want to do to bring out the best version of you. That's your choice. But mm -hmm. if you're showing somebody online, somebody that you're really only at a moment and not who the person is going to be dealing with. You're probably only hurting yourself because eventually they're gonna see who, you know, what the goods are there, as you will. You've gotta get in front of that person and connect to make a relationship work. So you've always gotta be thinking about the offline uh, encounter because that's yeah. what counts. Yeah, exactly. And it, yeah, the filter thing, I mean, one, it, it mostly it's very obvious that that you're using a filter so you're just setting yourself up you know for disappointment and I, like when it comes to pictures online I, I know there's dating coaches you know including Sandy that's one thing we disagree on she says that uh, you should take profession have professional pictures taken because there's so many bad pictures you know ha have it done right do your best and while I agree have good pictures you know professional just I don't know. It, it, it's, it's not real to me. Uh, I think you're much better off. I mean, our, our little cameras now, they take such great pictures, yeah. you know, have a friend take them, do something real, even if it's not perfect, but it, it shows the real you and it can it dramatically, dramatically improve your dating success. Well, I think there's a balance there. Uh, I would agree with Sandy that having a professional photo, everybody needs to have a professional photo. Uh, having one of those on your uh, profile is not a bad thing. So this shows you the professional version of me, the brand. And then you should have some 
photos that are you with some friends or you skiing or doing something active or just mm -hmm. casual or caught off the cuff type of thing. Yeah. Um, so they get a sense as to the vibe as to this is who this person is. Yeah, I don't know what it is with me and, and professional photos. I just when I see professional photos, it turns me off. And I, you know, and I'm speaking for myself. I'm not telling you about you don't do professional mm -hmm. photos. But there's something about that when I when I saw it on dating profiles, it's like, huh. Uh, I just have it. I mean, you even see like on Second Act TV, none of my pictures are professional. None. I either take them from our interviews, how, how we are. And that just to me is important. I, I as closely as possible, I want people to, uh, to see who we really are, me and my guests. Some of my guests don't like the screenshots I, um, I've taken in the past of them. <laughs> but those are just, those are, you know, Few and far in between. So I, I don't know. That's a topic I really sort of well, I, can, I, I would, can identify with. I'd have to agree with you. I think and both of us, we both have shows. To me, it's all about the authenticity, like mm -hmm. who we are. So I think your screenshots show the vibe of that particular episode, whether it's wacky or fun or mm -hmm. honest, straightforward. You know, right. I think you really do a great job capturing that. And I think uh, I try to do that with my shows also be real. You know, be as real as possible because that's what your brand is about, and that's what my brand is about, and that's how we position ourselves to help people. Here's another. Here's another good one. The baggage bearer. I again love the titles. A woman who is a baggage bearer carries the weight of past relationships into new ones. Well, of course, we've talked about this a lot too. But my goodness, you can't bring your old relationships to your new one. There is a new person in front of you. You know, everybody has baggage, and of course, people in the second half have. Everybody's got their stories. Yeah. But you have to be very mindful about not throwing those on your new right. prospect, if you will, because they're going to have their own stuff too, and you just don't want to be rehashing the past. I mean. The past, you can't do anything about. The future is ahead of you. The only thing that's real is right this very moment. I think there's a, a fine line or where we need to understand the difference between learning from the past and not making those mistakes again to letting the past dictate how how you know we perceive situations or what this person's going to do because you like what I'm talking about you know and I've mm -hmm. said this a million times too I I was in a relationship where you screwed around on me you know for for years and years and years and I put up with it that is so difficult you know not to just always have that one eye open and it it does it, this goes back to you know you really have to work on yourself that if there's something in your past that is constantly triggering something in the future when it isn't there big big red flag for a guy and does make you eventually undateable well it's it's certainly understandable to have that when you've been burned and you're going into a new relationship but i think what you want to do is keep that to yourself and see how things pan out. And mm -hmm. if you see some red flags or some signs of that, obviously you're gonna open your eyes even more. And uh, so as it's lesson learned, being mindful, being aware of some of these things, the behaviors that can happen. So, you know, you need to be aware, mm -hmm. uh, but that's different than bringing it up all the time or making the other person feel uncomfortable because of things you've gone through, because maybe they, they have been true and they haven't done that. And uh, now, now you're projecting on them and they're feeling uncomfortable and, and it's, it, they don't deserve it. Yeah. You definitely don't want to make a new guy pay for the old guy for the excess mistakes. I think it was right. what it comes down to. And uh, yeah, it'll, that definitely will make you uh, undateable. The, this is good too. The know it all that while confidence is attractive, he writes here, this kind of behavior comes across as arrogant and alienates potential partners. You know, a woman who is a know-it-all constantly corrects others, even on minor details. And she dominates conversations and interrupts to correct. That's totally annoying. And there's a lot of people like that. In a relationship, that's the last person you want to date because it's not a two-way, it's not an exchange. You're just listening to the other person and they're never wrong. And they just tell you what, everything they know. And they point out when you're wrong, oh, you should have done this. Or you should have done that. And that's a word nobody wants to hear is should have, should. And uh, it just becomes, that's one of the worst things for a potential partner. If you get into a situation where you see that coming, my opinion, turn and head the other way fast. Big turn off the know it alls, and yeah, I think I think we know a lot of them. All of us know a know it all, so we know what we're Absolutely. talking about. So if you're doing that, stop it. Stop correcting. <laughs> stop. 
<laughs> again, you, there's there's a time for that, but most of the time, you know, is, you got, is, is it necessary you know, to make this correction? So finally here, the one upper. The one upper is a woman um, who sees every conversation as a chance to outdo her partner. I agree. I, we, I would call that a topper where yeah. anything you come up with, they've done it and they've done it better. And that's even if it's not a romantic relationship, that's this annoying person that you, if you know they're a topper, they're a topper. What are you going to do? It's a form of insecurity, insecurity obviously. Yes. You're getting into a new relationship and the person's constantly topping you. You figure like, well, why bother? Because they've mm -hmm. already done something better than I have. Why, 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 why are they going to enjoy being with me since they've done everything better than me anyhow? So it's a, yeah. I think it's a real red flag something where you don't want to get too deep and in, deeply involved with somebody who has a propensity to be a topper. I, uh, I think also that's good advice for even when you start, when you first meet people on a date, you know, you, sometimes it's difficult to uh, hold conversations. So when you do have something in common, it's, oh yeah, I did that. Or you you know, and, and sometimes out of nervousness that can be done, mm -hmm. but I would invite, mm -hmm. you know, our viewers or anybody to see if you're doing that and then, and then just see, if you could just 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 listen to what this person has to say, then if it makes sense later, you know, to you know what, I, that's great. Yeah, I did something similar once, but don't interrupt to all of a sudden tell your story. People do that all the time, both men and women. Well, you know, we can talk about this for a long time. I thought it'd be kind of a fun conversation. <laughs> uh, Robert, is there anything else you want to add here before we before we yeah, end? I think I think the key thing is like authenticity, be yourself, be the best version of yourself, do, you know, do your very best, but be yourself and don't change for other people. And don't put off false pretenses, particularly when you want to meet somebody new, because again, they, you're going to meet offline and they're going to figure out who you are with in due time. So you might as well just be who you are. I'm not saying the worst version of yourself. I'm saying put on your best. It's like a job interview, put on the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm and respect yourself and respect the other person and uh, good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Robert, thank you so much. As usual, we will link to all of your information to your radio show, UK Health Radio, now all over the world, your YouTube channel, and of course your <laughs> book, The Guy's Guy's Guide to Love. Robert, thank you. And I look forward to our next conversation on Second Act TV. Thank you, Silka. Mm -hmm.